Welcome everyone and thank you for joining me today. The focus of this presentation is on using the GeoWeb 3D confinement system and installation best practices. This presentation assumes you're already familiar with GeoWeb GeoCells and their integral components, so bypasses some of the basic background information to focus on next level and intermediate techniques. We're going to move swiftly through the applications today. So please see our on-demand resources available at prestogeo.com for a deeper understanding in any one of the areas covered. I'm your host, Jose Paulo George, or JP, the International Business Development Manager with Presto Geo Systems. We manufacture industry-leading erosion control, stormwater management, and porous pavement products, all made in the upper Midwest of the United States. Through an extensive national and international distribution network, we offer technical and site support, as well as free project evaluation from our in-house design engineering team. Today's presentation will help you leverage our over 40 years of GeoCell experience and get installation best practices and technique tips. So here are the things I hope you get out of today's presentation. Understand the benefits of using a soil stabilization system for the major applications of load support, slope protection, channel armoring, and earth retention, with some fundamental installation steps for each. Gain install techniques to help installations be more effective and efficient, and how to train your team to set them up for success and ensure the best project outcome. During the presentation, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat window and we'll answer them after the presentation. Presto Geosystems worked with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to develop geocell technology in the late 1970s, and we've been innovating ever since. Our products have been used in over 200 countries in every state of the U.S. We go beyond simply providing a product all with an eye toward providing a complete solution for your project. We're going to start out with a quick recap of the GeoWeb 3D soil stabilization components, and then get into technique tips for installing each of the major application types. The three primary elements of any geocell system, cell walls, internal junctions, and connectors, must perform uniformly as a complete system and any incremental improvement in one characteristic is only valuable if a complementary improvement has been made in the other components of the system. GeoWeb is manufactured using a proprietary blend of high-quality virgin high-density polyethylene, and our formulation has stood the test of time for more than 40 years. It contains no fillers, unstable polymer combinations, or exotic polymer alloys. For most typical sites, GeoWeb will retain its durability for greater than 100 years with lab testing indicating 149 years without degradation, even at full exposure to the elements. We stand behind our numbers so you can deliver certainty in the solution and build with materials you can trust. GWeb and our accessories are 100% made in the USA under strict quality assurance and environmental control processes. Now let's recap those system components. The system components are all the supporting pieces that help the GWEB protect the surface and sub-base layers and also ensure relatively uniform performance of the interconnected system, thereby protecting against the damaging effects of non-uniform deformation and differential settlement in response to applied loads. Presto's GWEB system components increase strength and speed of installation each of them offering some additional best practice options that we'll mention in context with installation examples. Let's begin with installation techniques for the GWeb load support system. The first pro tip is to use a quality engineered solution best suited to your project needs. Uniform and consistent proven performance and durability, especially in demanding site environs, will be well worth it in the long term and our in-house design team can help you choose the right geocell based on site conditions. Soft subgrades like the harbor wetlands seen here are where GeoWeb geocells shine.
So here's a quick overview of the installation process. You start by getting the subgrade ready, then geotextiles or other planar geosynthetics as required by design. Next, lay out the GeoWeb sections. The GeoWeb sections are then interconnected. The Atrakey connector is shipped and convenient to hold three packs per case, as you see in the photo on the left. The mini pack can be carried to where connections are made, a good technique tip. A pro tip is to use the contractor pouches or aprons for a hands-free way to hold and carry keys and make the fast connections even speedier, as you see in the two photos on the right. The specific engineering values of the Atrakey will ensure the system holds up to loading over time without the corrosion seen in staples, the failure of underperforming cable tie systems, or cumbersome multi-piece connectors. And you'll want to hold the GeoWeb sections open for infilling, either with temporary stakes or by filling a few cells around the perimeter. We'll see an example of that in just a few more slides. The infill is placed, spread, and compacted with an appropriate wear surface. According to design, that could be an unpaved surface, a flexible pavement, or a rigid pavement atop the GeoWeb. Let's look at some examples from an unpaved load support system first. An aggregate surface has advantages in saving pavement costs, and with the GeoWeb system filled with open graded base cores, you can design a system that allows stormwater infiltration and provides stormwater storage. This was a project for a sawmill in Canada. Spring snow, snow melt and fall rains cause flooding and soft challenging ground conditions in the infeed area. And this photo is great to see how the geoweb was placed, held open with stakes at the perimeter, and then the infill was spread. Presto worked with the owners to develop a design to manage stormwater and snowmelt while providing stabilization and support of the heavy loads over soft subgrades. A six inch or 15 centimeter GeoWeb load support system with high strength woven geotextiles was installed with infill designed to promote stormwater infiltration. Here we see the GeoWeb sections expanded and the workers are just beginning to connect panels side to side with atrakeys. This design included a permeable base layer with less than 10% fines for stormwater purposes. The GeoWeb system provides a strong reinforcement layer for the constant heavy loads in that mill infeed area that they see daily. Here we see the infill being placed. And good technique is to limit the drop height to a meter or less, about three feet, to ensure the empty geocells don't fold over and are evenly filled. GeoWeb created a smooth platform that eliminated the rutting and constant maintenance, and both project owners and installers were pleased by the ease and speed of installation thanks to the Atrakey connectors. Here we see a good technique tip with crews working in parallel on the far left, placing the infill by the excavator while workers expand and connect new sections of GeoWeb. Far right, we see the roller compaction of the infill. Having a crew with well-defined roles allows this kind of work in parallel and install best practice and makes for an efficient installation. To ensure everyone knows what to do, take advantage of contractor training available including a construction resource package, training guides, videos, webinars, and even in-person or virtual seminars. See PressoGeo.com or any of our trusted distributors for more details. This is a good GeoWeb load support project to demonstrate using the GeoWeb as its own site access during construction. This was a project for Duke Energy in Florida to install new transmission towers through wetlands. Hurricane winds demolished over 100 towers, all of which had to be restored over this extremely soft subgrade, and the saturated sand couldn't support any type of vehicle loading. An enhanced woven geotextile was placed over the subgrade, adding an additional strength layer to the system and allowing water movement without getting clogged by the sandy material. 
The G-Web system was used for access and maintenance roads, as well as pads around the towers. So as before, the G-Web was expanded and held open with temporary stakes, then infilled by pushing with a bulldozer. The G-Web panels were filled with a low quality aggregate that could be easily sourced and transported to the remote locations for this project. Once the panels are filled in, both wheeled and tracked equipment can drive over the systems easily, even when the infill material is sand or other low quality stone. Again, we see how the G-Web panels act as their own access road. Just keep filling up the cells in front of you, so no need for additional temporary roadways, and this is a great construction time and resource saver. One important advantage for any unpaved surface utilizing G-Web stabilization is the use of open graded base cores. Since we do not need fines to achieve compaction for base stability, the system will function like an on-site detention basin, storing water in the void space of the GeoWeb infill. As a rule of thumb, a three-quarter inch or 19 millimeter open graded crushed aggregate has a void space of approximately 35%. So you can calculate how much water you can store to potentially reduce stormwater runoff and ultimately have the ability to reduce stormwater pond volume for land requirements. <laughs> There are many ways to place the infill. A rock slinger is one of them and allows precise placement for fast, even filling while controlling the height from which the aggregate falls. Buckets with extendable booms can also be helpful, though a push with a dozer or backhoe will work just fine. The GeoWeb 3D system is beneficial under hard pavements, including asphalt, reinforced concrete, and roller compacted concrete, especially in areas with soft subgrades and or drainage issues. Now on to some technique tips for those types of installs and large scale projects. This project for BNSF is a good example of base stabilization with technique tips of beneficial reuse of on-site materials, and staging tables and site layout are key takeaways with this big quantity. This is an auto storage yard for BNSF by the Seattle International Airport. It was a 25 acre site with soft subgrade and the original design included two layers of biaxial geogrids. After bidding, the cost came in higher than the budget allowed. So the engineer contacted us and we did a value engineered solution. In the far left of the screen, we see one of the stockpiles of salvaged material. This beneficial reuse of material saved a significant amount of material costs and sped up construction time. Here's a best practice pro, a best practice pro tip, staging tables, as staging is important for any large project. Here we see the use of the staging tables where adjacent panels are connected prior to being expanded and placed across the prepared subgrade. Each panel has an area of 270 square feet or about 25 square meters. And this contractor is using the tables to connect three panels together, providing a total area of over 800 square feet or about 75 square meters. The staging tables allow the workers to stand while connecting panels for a quicker and more ergonomic pre-assembly. The panels are then transferred for installation. Typical installation rates are about 3,000 square feet or 280 square meters per hour with a crew of three. And work can run parallel with one crew laying out the site, another installing the GeoWeb, and another filling and compacting for best efficiency. Another technique tip important for large projects is to prep the site layout. This contractor wanted square panels for the entire installation, so they actually surveyed and staked the corners of each GeoWeb panel over the 25-acre site. Once the GeoWeb panels were filled, they just pulled the stakes. Similar to using stretcher frames to open panels to a set distance, this made such a large install go very quickly and efficiently. 
Here we see a picture of the installation ongoing with a four inch wear surface to allow construction access during the installation process. Again, using the GeoWeb system as its own access road. At the far left, we see where the contractor stockpiled the on-site sandy soils to mix with crushed aggregate and save on construction costs. The expanded and connected GeoWeb mid-screen and the filling then compacting as we move to the far right. Again, this work in parallel across the site allows for an even more efficient installation process. Here we also see the stakes for the site layout from the site survey. These technique tips made for a very efficient install for such a large project. You can see the dump trucks, dump trucks back up to the GeoWeb, dumping the infill material and spreading with a bulldozer. The material supports loading immediately after filling, no cure time needed, serving as its own site access road for construction. And here's the finished surface. So here's a quick recap of some of the technique tips and best practices mentioned for a GeoWeb load support installation. See prestogeo.com for installation guides, videos, case studies, and additional resources. Next, we have some installation techniques for the GeoWeb slope protection system for slopes and shorelines. Whether it's a slope adjacent to railways, embankments along a roadway, a mine slope reclamation, geomembrane protection, shoreline revetment, or other slope application, there are ways to make the slope protection systems installation safer, easier, and faster. Here's a quick overview of the installation process for a slope system with anchor stakes. First, prepare the subgrade and install a geotextile, if part of your design, from crest to toe. Then anchor the geoweb at the crest, noting the horizontal turn at the top. Expand sections downslope, connecting side to side as possible on the crest and the remainder on slope. Continue installing anchors at their frequency recommended by design and at the toe of the slope. The ATRA anchors hold the GWEB to slope and penetrate into the ground. If corrosion resistance is required due to project conditions, Presto has an HDPE ATRA speed stake designed to work with the GWEB and offer higher resistance to extraction than rebar or J-hooks. Once the system's properly anchored, infill from top of slope down. Here's an example of a railway slope project in Montana with the use of ATRA anchor stakes. Aggregate infill was chosen for both sides of the embankment for erosion control plus a low maintenance slope cover. This project shows the benefit of material delivery at the top of the slope, greatly reducing the handling and truck traffic into surrounding areas. When such delivery is possible, it makes for a faster, safer, and easier installation. Here we see the workers installing the stake anchors to keep the GWEB section in place. And here we see the panels being filled with crushed aggregate. Infill is done from the top down to prevent panel overstretching. Rock slingers, as shown in the load support section, also work well for this top down infill process. And just a close-up picture showing the GWEB panels were extended under the bridge abutments. And a picture of the finished slope. Here's another example from a mine slope with ATRA anchor stakes and waste rock as the GWEB infill. This project is great to see the work in parallel and an ATRA GAD to drive anchors with one worker measuring and marking for stakes, another placing them for anchorage, and another using a pneumatic hammer with Atragad to drive them. This site also used an on-slope delivery tote for safe, expedient restocking of anchor stakes.
and here with the infill placed and slope stabilized with GeoWeb GeoCells. Additional infield adjustments can be made following a stake pullout test with a fish scale to ensure actual values match the geotech report and information used in the evaluations calculations. This quick double check can give you some extra peace of mind for your staked slope protection. Some slope protection systems are over a geomembrane or other liner that cannot be punctured or on very steep slopes or over rocky soil. In those cases, a system with tendons and load transfer devices is used. So here's a quick overview of the installation process for atra tendon clip installations. First, prepare the subgrade and install the geotextile as recommended. At the crest, insert tendons through the cell wall eye slots and secure the tendons to the crest anchorage. Only the atra tendon clip is specifically designed to fully transfer safely and securely the forces placed upon the geocell. Every accessory and every feature has been designed and tested to specifically work together. So we go from problem to design to construction solution with a system where the modeling replicates real world forces. Install the after tendon clip load transfer devices as per design and at the crest of the slope, then expand sections down slope. Connect section side to side and end to end as possible on the crest and the remainder on slope. Anchor the toe with either atra tendon clips or stakes according to design. And once the system is properly anchored, infill from top of slope down. Let's see that process with a couple of project installations for examples. This is a vegetated slope project at a solar farm and allows us to show some great step-by-step -step install picks while pointing out best practices with after tending clips. The solar site included a sloped area leading to a large detention pond for stormwater management and GWeb helped stabilize that slope and control erosion. Tendons were laid out, measured, and marked per design then insert it through the eye slots on the, slope of the, on the slope crest, with sections being built on the flatter ground where it's safer and easier to work. A suspended rod through the tendon spools is a good technique tip that can be helpful when marking and inserting the tendons. For this GWeb slope protection system, a PVC pipe was used as dead man anchor at the crest of the slope. And here's the connection of the tendons to that pipe. There are many ways possible to tie off the tendon to crest anchorage, and the specific knot type is up to the contractor to determine, as long as the knot is secured and permanent. One recommended knot is known as the trucker's hitch knot, and it's a self-binding knot common for tying loads to secure them at a fixed point. It can be tied anywhere in the standing part of a line and can create high tension lines that can be used to safely secure heavy loads. Here's what that knot looks like. The pre-assembled sections, once connected to the crest anchorage, are then hung over the slope like a curtain and extended down slope. With the GeoWeb system and tendons and after tendon clips, you can pre-measure, mark, and know the layout for pre-assembly based on project design. Let's look at a project to underscore the value of that pre-assembly and show some pro tips for doing it. This tendon GeoWeb slope project highlights the pro tips of that marking and pre-assembly using staging tables for pre-assembly of the GWeb, after tendon clips, and tendons. Ergonomic and efficient. An assembly line with staging tables allows for pre-building the slope protection sections. 
The pre-assembled panels are marked for location, then taken to install, ready to hang in place on the slope. The pre-assembly means much work is done on the flats instead of slope side, much safer and more efficient for workers. Here's a quick recap of some of the technique tips and best practices mentioned for a GeoWeb slope protection system installation. For install guides, videos, case studies, and additional resources, visit prestogeo.com. Our next set of installation techniques will be for the GeoWeb Earth Retention System. Here are the two different wall options and cross section. Gravity with longer pieces of web at the bottom that get shorter as you go up. And the weight of the infill GeoWeb provides the retention or GeoGrid reinforced or the GeoGrid provides the retention and GeoWeb functions as a fascia alternative. In either case, again, the front cell can be filled with topsoil and the back cells or reinforced zone use any drainable material. The Astro wall key is the major component for a completely integrated earth retention system and is used to connect adjacent GeoWeb retaining wall sections through the material eye slots. The Astro wall key includes an integrated washer at the base of the handle for co coverage of the eye slots frictional barbs for improved interlock with the GeoWeb sections, and an ergonomic handle with S-shaped contouring for ease of installation. Formulated to withstand weathering and ultraviolet radiation, the Atra wall keys will not corrode or photodegrade, even when exposed to harsh environments. Securing sections with the wall keys is faster than using staples or zip ties, requires no tools, and can be completed by one installer with one easy turn. Here's a quick overview of the installation process for the GeoWeb Earth Retention System. As with other applications, prepare the subgrade and install any geotextiles as recommended by design. The step of expanding the GeoWeb section is best done with stretcher frames or stretcher bars. Pro tips in their own regards, we'll come back to those in detail. And the interconnection of sections has another pro tip option with the Atra wall key, color match to fascia. For vegetated walls, topsoil in the front cell and any granular drainable material in the back. For a geosynthetic reinforced wall, add the geogrid as recommended by design and shown in step 10. And for a vegetated wall, either reinforced or gravity, on to step 11. While reinforced walls are not limited in height, it's a good technique tip to use multiple tiers of shorter height walls rather than a single wall tier. This is because the length of the reinforcement may become too great with just a single tier. The ratio of wall height to reinforcement length is 70%. So a six meter or 20 foot high wall must have four and a quarter meters or 14 feet of reinforcement and a 40 foot high wall needs 28 feet of reinforcement. You get the idea. So using shorter tiers allows you to keep that reinforcement length reasonable while still achieving the overall required height. Chew up walls can be vegetated or non-vegetated with concrete or crushed aggregate as infill. This wall is benched and stepped back and we see the ability to change batter angle angle over a short distance. We'll offer a pro tip for batter angle in a bit. GeoWeb Earth Retention Systems offer some great benefits beyond stability. Aesthetics and cost are compelling reasons. Here are some others. GeoWeb also can help reduce urban heat, isle, urban heat island effects and can help green up urban areas. GeoWeb walls are environmentally friendly due to their no maintenance vegetation and their ability to capture stormwater runoff. Using local grasses and flowering vegetation will help ensure easy growth and a natural look, and the actual wall keys are color matched to the fascia. 
Installation of the GeoWeb wall system is fast and materials are lightweight and easy to assemble. GeoWeb MSC walls are both less expensive for materials and for labor compared with traditional MSC walls such as masonry walls or gabion block walls. And compared to many other wall systems, GeoWeb walls have a lower carbon footprint for manufacturing and transportation. They can help with green infrastructure and low impact development plans for a project site as well. One of the most significant benefits of GeoWeb walls is its relative lightweight compared to concrete MSC walls and the ability to tolerate reasonable differential settlement. So building over soft soils or areas where differential settlement is a concern is not a problem for GeoWeb walls. They can handle several inches of differential settlement, vital for areas with saturated soils. Here we see a GeoWeb wall being constructed in close proximity to extremely wet rice fields in Japan. Using the GeoWeb system can help avoid expensive and time-consuming activities such as surcharge loading a site, which often has to happen when differential settlement is a concern. The time required for the surcharge loading may be reduced or even eliminated when using a GeoWeb wall. It also reduces the amount of visual inspection maintenance and repair over the lifetime of the wall structure, since the GeoWeb panels can accommodate much more movement than masonry walls. GeoWeb walls perform well in strong seismic areas and with live traffic loading. It's always necessary to consider live and dead loads that the wall will experience during construction and over time. Dead loads can be buildings or the soil slopes above a wall. Live loads are for construction traffic and long-term vehicle traffic if the wall is below a road or driveway. When possible, the load should be placed away from the edge of the wall or fascia. If not, the design will need to be robust enough to support and withstand the live and dead loads. Having traffic barriers at the top of the wall will help keep the loads away from the front face of the wall system and can help with the design. GeoWeb walls work well with integrating traffic barriers and infrastructure, such as the sonotubes and large pipe culverts seen here. There's no loss of structural integrity because of the continuous web connections and the after wall keep. GeoWeb sections can be easily trimmed to fit culverts, sonotubes, or other obstructions. Let's get into more tips for fitting and fieldwork. Building a stretcher frame is a definite best practice for geocell retaining walls, and we have plans for wooden ones, ideal for walls with a constant cell size, such as most reinforced walls, or for expandable ones that are better suited for gravity walls and have more cells at the bottom and less as the lifts are increased. Check out the installation tab at prestogeo.com to download the full construction resource package or just the stretcher frame plans. While stretcher frames are great for a straight wall, a pro tip is to use stretcher bars for any curved areas. Our installation guides have plans and diagrams for both. And now we'll look at some step-by-step -step wall builds so you can see them put to use. Most of the examples will show wooden stretcher frames, but remember they can be made out of PVC or other materials and can even be adjustable like this example. Use what works best for your site's needs. Now we'll walk through the steps of a GeoWeb earth retention system being built as part of a vegetated stacked channel. Here workers are preparing the footing for a GeoWeb wall. And on the right, we see a footing layer of GeoWeb installed with granular infill placed. The stretcher frames and the infill process. A pro tip is to have a portable compactor on level with the build and compact as you go. And here are the stretcher frames from another angle. The stretcher frames are placed spikes up and then the GeoWeb is placed over the stretcher bar. Once the section is open to optimal size on the frame, the frame and GeoWeb are flipped over, making sure the fascia panels 
based the proper way. Once the section with frame is in place, infill can be placed, and then the stretcher frame lifted away. Here we see the frames lifted away and reloaded, far left, getting ready for the next layer. Don't forget to compact each layer. And the process repeats, going down the line, connecting panels side to side. And working in parallel for a more efficient installation. And as one side of the stack channel is completed, onto the other, also using stretcher frames. And here we see the newly constructed GeoWeb walls on either side of the watercourse. And as vegetation begins, the front fascia cells were seeded with a native plant mixture and an aggregate topsoil mix. Notice this slight curve in the wall towards the top of your screen. When your wall has to curve beyond a gentle turn, stretcher bars are a best practice as they'll hold the wall cells open to the optimal expansion while making the consistent curve radius needed. Note the portable compactors to compact the foundation layer. In this slide, we see where the wall path transitions from straight to curve, with the stretcher frame used for the straight portion and in conjunction with the stretcher bars. The process for stretcher bars is similar to a stretcher frame, only in a curve and no flip needed. See our installation resources, including videos particular to placing stretcher bars and other pro technique tips on our YouTube channel. Drainage is a very important topic that needs to be addressed with any MSE wall, including the GeoWeb wall system. Hydrostatic pressure buildup and improper drainage behind a wall face is the leading cause of wall failure, no matter the type of wall. The GeoWeb system is better equipped than impervious walls, such as concrete block walls, because by, it, by its nature, it allows for water movement throughout the system. However, even with this, it's crucial to understand your specific site conditions and ensure that hydrostatic buildup is mitigated. One of the best ways to mitigate that hydrostatic pressure is with a drainage pipe installed behind the GeoWeb panels. This could be a perforated pipe wrapped in a geotextile to prevent clogging. This type of drain system is a best practice pro tip you'll want to be sure to include. The drain pipe should daylight in an area that can manage the collected water. The pipe can either come through the front of the wall, like shown here, or end at the side of the wall, depending on what, what works best for your site. It's also important to make sure that wherever the pipe drains, is set up such that the excessive erosion will not occur at the outfall, which would lead to undermining the wall at that point. This is the most common type of drainage mitigation. Note that your drainage system needs to be designed by the project engineer and can include as many pipes as necessary to ensure that water is properly collected within the wall structure. Using a clean aggregate, and other good drainable soils as the infill and backfill can also help with drainage concerns. If you know there's a place for water to flow, such as the groundwater system or a nearby lower elevation creek, allowing the water to drain straight through the GeoWeb wall is an option. The material used in the construction of the wall will have to be sized for the task, so using an aggregate mix with low fine content is, is a good choice. Sandy soil mixes are also good for drainage. Avoid using clay or silty soils, which will impede drainage and cause pressure buildup behind your GeoWeb walls. A drainage trench above the wall can help route surface water away from the wall so the structure does not become oversaturated. Here's another issue to consider along the lines of drainage. If your location is an active channel of flow, that water can be rerouted. And here's a stacked wall channel example. Bypassing the construction area 
And here's that channel with vegetation starting to establish. And four years after install, invisibly yet reliably protected. If you prefer not to bypass or reroute the water, it's okay to construct the system in water too. Stepped walls are a bit of an advanced install, needing some technique and extra planning. Our full installation guide gives examples of calculating offset dimensions for a GeoWeb wall on a stepped base. Useful for an interesting wall such as this. The engineer used three different wall batters and multiple stepped areas to make the GeoWeb fit the site. We mentioned the drainable fill a few slides back. You may also consider routing the front cells or filling them with concrete when high flow is expected, like this highway retention pond. Or a mix of medium, as you see in this project, with aggregate fascia along the pathway and topsoil for vegetation elsewhere. The careful alignment of cells vertically from one lift to another is a good pro tip and worth the extra care. Not only will your wall be more aesthetically pleasing, especially important if it's non-vegetated, but the alignment will help prevent potential material loss in the fascia cell that might occur if your cells are misaligned. Here's an example of good cell alignment. and another. Another technique best practice and pro tip is to check the wall batter as you build. Here we see construction in process with batter check stations along the way. No problem with compaction, or around curves, and the same setback angle is maintained. Notice the cell alignment vertically from one lift to the next in that curved area in the photo on the right, and how the batter checkboards help keep that consistency all throughout. Batter checks are a good pro tip to build beautiful walls. A proper wall batter with slight setback is not only nice looking, it can help ensure good vegetation for your wall. We typically re recommend a setback of about five centimeters or two inches. Here we can see the wall structure is constructed with a slight setback to allow for topsoil fill in the front cells. The wall can be seeded either by mixing the seeds into the soil before installation or by hydro seeding once your installation is complete. And then this turns into this. To design your own GeoWeb earth retention system, request a copy of the MSE wall design software from our webpage, pressogeo.com, in the design tab. Otherwise, activate our in house design team for a free project evaluation and let us do the heavy lifting for you. Here's a quick recap of some of the technique tips and best practices mentioned for the GeoWeb Earth Retention System installation. Visit our website for installation guides, videos, case studies, and additional earth retention resources. The following set of installation techniques will be for the GWeb channel protection system. As the install process for channel projects can be similar to many slope systems, and as we touched a bit on stacked channels with GWeb walls, we'll focus only on aspects not yet covered, such as hard armor protection and applicable technique tips. First, here's a quick recap of some of the technique tips and best practices mentioned for the GeoWeb slope protection system installation. These slope and shoreline tips still apply to the GeoWeb channel armoring system, 
So keep them in mind as we talk about channel installations. For, for efficiency's sake, we're only highlighting new ones to this section. The GWeb channel system installation steps are similar to the slope install initially. Though as you expand the section down slope, you must note the water flow direction and GWeb should be towed in at the upstream termination. This is an important technique tip and one you should also do at transition areas if your channel goes from hard armor to competent rock, for example. Key in or tow in at that transition. Talk with our design team for additional details on that specific to your site needs. Continue installing anchors at the frequency recommended by design. And once the system is properly anchored, infill from top of slope down. If it's a concrete channel armoring install, it might work best to fill the bottom of the channel first and then the side slopes. We trust the GWeb system and have the experience and research to back us. Presto did a big series of channel armoring tests at Colorado State University under the direction of Dr. Chris Thornton. CSU is considered one of the top hydraulic research facilities in the world, and their lab has a couple hundred feet of static head, about 80 meters, to achieve extremely high velocities and shear stresses in both their indoor and outdoor test flumes. With impressive test results for vegetated, aggregate, and concrete GeoWeb channels. Let's dig in with some technique tips for each, starting with vegetated channels. Here's a technique tip for using the GeoWeb system along channel side slopes. Notice how the panels just cover the sides, not the channel bottom. The GWeb panels will allow for vegetation growth up both embankments, which will not normally be underwater. Notice the bright yellow liner beneath the panels. In this case, using the tendon anchorage system will hold the GWeb panels in place without damaging this liner. And even with the liner beneath, vegetation can still grow thanks to the soil held within the cells of the GWeb panels. As the stormwater overflow channel becomes flooded during storm events, the side slopes are protected and the channel can do its job. Here's a project near Phoenix, Arizona that can highlight some new technique tips for us and show an aggregate channel example. Heavy runoff from intense storms were leading to erosion and flooding in adjacent subdivisions. Several existing embankments and channel sections failed under 100-year storm events. Here's a pro tip particular to channels. One of the really nice things about using the GeoWeb is that it allows for adjustments. Here we see the GeoWeb cell depth was reduced from 8 inches to 4 inches, as the second half of the channel from the main inlet was subjected to reduced flow rates and shear stresses. Because of this reduction, less protection was required, so a shallower GWeb panel was used, which saved cost and installation time while still meeting performance requirements. A seamless transition was made by connecting the 30V8 to the 30V4, as you see here. This is only possible due to the strength of the atrochy. Using staples or zip ties does not provide enough strength and the panels will separate over time. GWeb panels are very flexible and can be easily cut in the field to allow for pipe penetrations, as we saw with the sonotubes in the GWeb wall portion. And again, no loss of integrity to the system performance. Here we see some drainage pipes from a nearby detention pond, and it's very simple to complete field cuts of the GWeb panels to accommodate structures like these, so there are no areas left unprotected. The area right below the drainage weirs should be built more robustly since this is the area with the highest potential for stone washout due to turbulence of water coming out of the pipes. 
The infill was raised waste rock from a nearby quarry, and it's not the greatest quality, but that's all right. When using GeoWeb, the rock does not have any requirements other than size and that it be angular, so money can be saved on material and hauling costs. An infill material to avoid is river rock or rounded rock since it does not lock up and could be scoured away over time. The advantage to GeoWeb aggregate channels is construction equipment can drive on the GeoWeb areas immediately after filling. So here, as you see in the photo on the left, you can use the GWeb channel as an access road for its own construction. And here's the installation under typical flow conditions. We see the technique tip of adding drop structures and several were designed throughout the channel to reduce the water velocity before reaching the end of the channel so water can be more naturally transported to the groundwater system. With the aggregate protection system, there's little to no maintenance required since the aggregate is confined and it won't need to be replaced. The channel is large enough to accommodate large storm events without overtopping. Outfall areas can be challenging because they typically have higher velocities and shear stresses than the channel as a whole. And the water in these areas are, uh, involves a lot of turbulence rather than laminar and smooth flow, which can cause its own set of problems. Using the GeoWeb system can help mitigate these concerns, especially when concrete is used, since turbulent flow and high velocities are not an issue. For concrete channels, another pro tip is to use the GWeb as the formwork and have it contour as needed for your outfall structures. The GWeb channel system is flexible enough to modify the structure. Here's a technique tip of grouting in large riprap in a rockfall area of a mine closure channel. Or you can add energy dissipators directly as part of your channel design. If you want a vegetated channel but have strong flows, a pro tip is to include surface protection over the panels, such as the TRM or QR fabric, as you see here. This is intended for short duration events rather than continuous flow. If you have high velocity or shear stresses for your channel armoring, you may likely be using a concrete infill for your GWeb channel like this mine closure channel in Guatemala. Here we see the technique tip of filling the channel bottom first, then the side slopes. This is to ensure the system stays in place as no stakes are used, but also facilitates construction as crews can traverse that channel bottom as they finish the side slopes. For the side slopes, we fill again from crest to toe. This channel had a drop structure rapids incorporated, and here we see the joining of the rapids to the rest of the GeoWeb channel with a drone view of the rapid structure here. A pro tip for concrete channel infill is to use a concrete boom pump, as you see here, or a line pump if you have an install easily accessed horizontally. Another important consideration and technique tip is to include site access along the channel crest that can support the loading of cement trucks and other heavy equipment. Temporary access mats can help if design constraints will not permit access as part of the design and can even be placed in the water. Here's a quick recap of some of the technique tips and best practices mentioned for a GWeb channel armoring system installation. For installation guides, videos, case studies, and additional resources, visit prestogeo.com. We deliver quality and over 40 years of expertise, guaranteeing each shipment meets or exceeds our specs, so you can deliver certainty and build with materials you can trust. No disclaimers or concerning fine print. And the best quality and service in the industry. And that's the presentation. I want to thank you for attending and remind you, you can send questions to us at any time at info at prestogeo.com. Go to prestogeo.com for a wealth of information, 
And don't forget to view our YouTube videos found by clicking on the YouTube icon in the upper right corner of our webpage. If you have a technique tip that we didn't mention, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Quick housekeeping note, as an attendee, you'll receive a PDH certificate within one day, then a follow-up email from Presto Geosystems with helpful links and resources along with the recorded webinar. I'll answer questions next, but if you have a question I don't get to or a pro tip to share, please respond to the follow-up email. Thank you. All right, many questions. Let's start, uh, go in order. Are the presentation slides available for download? Can I have a copy after the webinar? Uh, yes, a recording will be sent via email within two days. And uh, if you want a copy of a certain slide, please respond directly to that email or reach out to me. You see my email on the screen now, josepalo.george at pressogeo.com, and I'd be glad to accommodate. Next question, uh, would GeoWeb help in mitigating the movement of expansive soils under a concrete trail? GeoWeb shines over these type of soft soils uh, like expansive clays. Regardless of your final surface, it can be a concrete trail, it can be an aggregate. Um, we're happy to come up with a design to work with you and uh, look at what works best for your site needs. Please utilize our free project evaluation service. Go to prestogeo.com. And in the design tab, you'll find the link for that. Input a few of the site parameters, and we can run calculations and recommend a solution best suited to your needs. Uh, next question, how big is one panel? expanding in one direction. It sounded like connecting many panels together before expanding is efficient. Um, to answer that, let's talk about how these panels are shipped. So they ship very efficiently to a site. They come tri-folded and bundled and palletized, and the sections open up and expand like an accordion. So if you think back to the example of the staging tables, the workers connected three sections, three side-by-side -side sections, each of them about 270 square feet or about 25 square meters per panel. And connected together, the three of them gave you uh, about 800 square feet or uh, 75 square meters altogether. And the couple of guys in that crew were able to lift those interconnection interconnected sections together. So it installs quite quickly and efficiently. Um, you carry it over to the install site and then open up the panels manually by uh, staking one end or putting some infill in one end and then pulling. And you pull to expand them and open them up again like an accordion if you want to see examples of that and videos of that, uh, check out our YouTube page or see the online resources at prestogeo.com. We have many examples. <clears throat> um, there's a question, what's used under the system for slope stabilization? It depends on your design. Uh, many times we'll use a geotextile for separation. If it's the same, infill material as what's beneath, it might not be necessary. If it's a, a protected liner, like a landfill operation, many times that'll be some type of geomembrane. So again, it, it's very design specific. If you have something in mind, again, reach out to our design team and we're happy to talk through the details particular to your project. Next question, what type of PVC pipe can be used as a dead man? Um, really, the type of pipe isn't as important as the diameter and the burial depth of the pipe. It works as an anchor um, because of its value as extraction, like pulling it out of the ground. 
So we will typically specify that sizing design by design or project by project. Again, work with our design team if you have something in mind. The size is more important than the type. How steep can the slope be before it's recommended to use a wall instead of slope? That's a great question. Um, again, it's design by design, project by project, um, and project specific. A good rule of thumb is about 60 degrees, although we've done slopes as steep as in the 70 degree range with the slope protection system, they become less efficient then because so much anchorage is required. Um, and at, at that point, it's more efficient and more cost effective to go with a wall design. Uh, another question about the pipe, the schedule of PVC pipe. Um, your standard schedule 40 PVC pipe will work fine as a dead man anchor. Um, in retaining wall stacked layers, each is compacted as it's placed. What prevents the layers from sliding horizontally later on? So we look at all the different wall failure mechanisms as part of our design process, or as you design them using our MSE wall design software, if you wish. And as these layers are stacked atop one another, their own weight will often be enough to hold them in place as they're infilled. Can you use GWeb as the bottom of the pond with a high water table. Uh, yes. Again, if you have a certain project in mind, we'd be happy to help run the design calculations and a project evaluation so you can make a, a value engineering option. How cost effective is GeoWeb for smaller projects? Um, again, with our free project evaluation service, you can determine if it's a good fit particular to your projects. Do we have listings of Department of Transportation that your products are on their qualified products list? Uh, that's state specific. Again, reach out to us if you have an area in mind that you're looking for and we can tell you, yes, that one's on the list or not. Most DOTs, in fact, many are on this webinar with us, um, they can quickly let you know. Another question asking about design guides for permanent wet access road. Yes, we have many low water crossings. Um, you can see examples of that as case studies on our website. Uh, let's see, there are so many more questions and we're already a bit over time. Let me see many of these we've kind of touched on. Um, one of them asking about our technical support and I guess that's a good one to end on. We pride ourselves uh, on our technical support and quality as your partner looking for the successful installation of your project. If I didn't get to your question or you have a technique tip to share, please respond to that follow-up email or reach out to me directly. Again, my contact emails are still on the screen or info at prestogeo.com and we'd be glad to work with you on your project. Thank you for joining us for the installation best practices and I wish you a good day.